Today, I'm going to show you exactly how you can backtest strategies in TradingView, even if you failed your high school or college coding class like me. And by the end of this video, you will have your very own trading strategy on TradingView ready to backtest. Now, if I'm being honest, I didn't fail. I was going to fail. So I dropped the class before the deadline and then I retook a different class and cheated to get past that one. But I don't know very much about coding. And so this is the perfect video for you if you're like me. Okay, so believe it or not, it's actually not that complicated of a process. And with the use and the help of AI, I think we can do this very fast. And once you get the hang of it and do it once, you'll be like quickly pumping along and then being able to get into more advanced, complex strategies and like build this out to really whatever you want to do. I'm also going to leave a link below this video that will give you the exact code that I am using if you want to test at least with my example, just so you can get the feel for it, plug it in trading view, see how it works, mess around with the settings, and then you can build off of that, either improve upon it, or at least go from there, because you'll have something that works for sure, or at least now it works for me. I don't know if things will change, but at least it works, and so you can replicate that. So the first thing you need to do is you need to get some sort of code that you can paste into the Pine editor of trading view. We'll get there next, but we're going to use ChatGPT because why not? You can use really any AI. I've been using chat, so I know this does work. But essentially, I was, you know, prompting it, asking some questions, going back and forth, messing around. And then it said, hey, do you want me to create you a ready to use template strategy so you can paste it in TradingView and get started with your backtesting? I was like, sure, let's see what you can do. So I said, great, create one for the RSI on SPY. Now, it essentially goes, it gives me this code. I copy this code and then I go to trading view. Now I'm going to show you guys what happened first. So if I went to trading view and you're like, okay, here I am. I'm on a layout. I'm like, wow, great. You probably have an understanding for what this is. If you're watching this video, if you don't, I'm pretty sure there's plenty of videos of my own and other people that you can watch to get some sort of footing on trading view if you don't have one already, but you'll scroll or you'll look to the bottom left corner where we have the pine editor. Okay. So you'll see this piece or this section right here. And what you'll do is you'll literally just go in here and either create something new, go to strategy, create one that's new, or you'll just take this out and paste over it. Okay. Now what happened was I did that. Okay. So if I go in here, right. And I take this and I paste over this and I just go command V we paste over it. Cool. I click update on the chart. What I'm going to see is it's going to say, Hey, we have some problems. So then I go back to chat. Actually, it asked me to add some more realistic stop loss and take profit features. So I said, sure. And so I copied this code specifically and it gave me some problems. I said, I got this error and then it goes, Hey, here, I've already corrected the error for you. Here's what could potentially be the problem. Try this code instead. Now I didn't even, I forgot. I literally forgot to paste the error in and it pretty much fixed itself. So then it tells me, okay, here are the potential problems. And it gave me a fixed version of the code. So it's quite long, but again, this took me legitimately seconds. Like I'm asking chat, Oh, pasted it. Oh, we got an error. Go back to chat. Hey, we have an error. Boom. It gives me this. It then spits this out to me. This is the code that I will leave a link underneath this video too. So if you want to grab this exact code and paste it into your trading view pine editor, you can do that. I'll leave it below. No email stuff. It'll be a link below this video for free. So I grab this code and I go back to trading view and I go, okay, let's try this again. So I completely take this out, command V, paste this bad boy in. I go update on the chart. This time, boom, it immediately defaults over to the strategy tester right here. So I was in the pine editor and it worked and it goes over to the strategy tester next. And you go, whoa, we're seeing good chart numbers going up. Like this is profitable. Cool. I'll, well, I'll get to that in a second. So you're good. This code works. There's no errors. Awesome. Great. Again, link it below if you want to copy it, but you could do the exact same thing with something else. I'm just using the general RSI kind of indicator or built a slight strategy around the RSI. You can build this around any indicator. You can make it super complex. You can make it super simple. This I'd say is quite simple, but that there's also things we can customize and I'll show you. So now we have something that works. I'm going to go to the strategy tester section. Now, this is where the money is made, or I guess this is where the back testing is done. So inside of here, we have a couple different tabs, overview, performance, trade analysis, risk performance ratios, and then list of trades. There's two things I look at the most, but everyone's different. You can really kind of play with this and run with it however you want to. I'm going to go to overview first, because here is where I look at just to get a broad sense of what this strategy is doing. Like, is it good? Is it profitable? Simple. Is it profitable? Okay. Now, so I have gone back. 
over the past 365 days. So up in the top right, or I guess the top right of the pine editor, or I guess this bottom section of trading view. Okay. And I've put it to the last 365 days. So here it's going to show me all the trades that would have triggered based on the settings. You go settings. I thought we did this code thing. Well, guess what? When we create this code, we essentially are allowing, or inside of this, we allow the ability to go into the settings and customize things. So inside of here, there's the inputs and the properties. There's also the style and the visibility. Style and visibility, not a huge deal. It's kind of just what you want to see on your chart. You might not want to see anything. You might not care. Properties, inputs. Here's where things get more interesting. So I can now go in and adjust the RSI length, the overbought level, the oversold level, the order size as a percent of the equity. So based on my account, which I have initial capital set to, I think $100,000, I can go in and change that if I want to. I can have the take profit multiple set to this, stop loss set to this as a percentage. So all of these things I can go in and customize. So now when I change these things, so for example, this is, I've already done some of this, okay? So I've already kind of semi-optimized this prior to the video, just so that we had something that like, I knew this kind of works. So you can kind of say, hey, you could legitimately go in and take this exact code and copy this exact strategy on TradingView, set up the alerts. And over the past year, you'd be up 16.5% technically. I mean, if you just follow what it did. So that's cool. Uh, does that mean it's going to happen next year? Uh, I don't know. Probably not. Maybe it's possible, but it's a promising start. That's the whole point. It's a starting point. When I go in and let's say I change the stop loss percentage from 0.8 to 1.5. Okay, click OK, click on update report. Watch this. See how it was 16% returns? Now it's down to 4.1%. Okay, we just made a big change. So now when I go back in these settings and I update the settings, I change the settings, I'm going to be able to mess around and figure out what might be the most optimal settings for my strategy. So that's what it comes down to, at least in terms of optimizing this like back test. Now, Inside of this, some things you should be aware of uh, for those who may not be familiar with backtesting, um, this max equity drawdown. So when you get into things uh, like let's say prop firms or even just your own personal account, this is a huge piece. I don't necessarily care. I mean, I, I obviously we wanna see the, a really good performing strategy. Great, great. If you've if, if got something that's, that's making money, it's very profitable, it's way above the S&P, cool. But if that comes with huge fluctuations, meaning the drawdown, do you want that? That's up to you. Everyone's going to have their own risk tolerance, right? So this had a drawdown of nearly 4% as the max drawdown, which to be honest is pretty darn good. It's not that bad. So that I will take. It had 48 trades in the past year, 41%, 41.67 profitable, which is like, oh my gosh, but a profit factor of 1.68. If you know what that means, that's essentially meaning a profitable strategy despite a less than 50% win rate because the winners make substantially more money than the losers. That's what all that's telling me. Okay, we've got a profitable strategy. We've got a 4% max drawdown. Not too bad. I'm sure I could stomach through that, right? Not a big deal. If it was my own money, I put in $1,000 of my own money, $10,000 or $100,000, or I was on a prop firm, as an example, you could do this and apply this to a prop firm. Well, my prop firm max drawdown is 8% or it's 10%. Well, this strategy over the past year only had 4% and it would have been up 16 cool, maybe I can actually use the prop firm for this strategy. Awesome. Now, beyond that, we can look deeper into performance tab, the trade analysis tab, which will give us some more information on longs versus shorts. So we can optimize things potentially down the road, risk performance ratios. I'm not going to dive too deep into these things because that's like a whole other, you know, optimization type of thing. But the list of trades is where I think it's interesting. So you can kind of scroll through the list of trades and see the price points when the longs were taken, when the shorts were taken, all that great stuff. And then on top of that, if I wanted to go inside of here, so where that where that settings icon was, I can download this file. So then I can download all of this data, the list of trades data or all this data. And then I can look on Excel and optimize or figure out from there and optimize. There is literally endless ways that you can look at trading data on Excel to optimize it, which could be an entire like, you know, half hour long video in and of itself. So this is super, super cool. But there's a couple of important things we need to talk about before we wrap the video up. We're looking right now at a one hour time frame. Okay. So if I was to change this to a four hour time frame, watch what happens. We now have way less trades and we have a worse 
PL. If I was to go to, let's say, a 30 minute time frame, we now have more trades, not a bad PL, profitable, but not as profitable, at least percentage wise, as what we had, and we have a larger drawdown. So when we change the time frames, that's going to throw the data off and it's going to change our back tests. So just make sure you're aware of that when you're looking at this and you start messing around. On top of that, if you go over to the right hand side and you say, hey, I can't see 365 days, that's because I believe it is the deep backtesting feature that you don't have access to on TradingView. Unfortunately, that's a premium feature. So on TradingView's plans, premium is $49.95 a month. That's the current plan that I'm on. But if you are looking to upgrade and you want to get that feature, wait until Black Friday. I'm making this video. Black Friday is actually not that far away, like at all. So that's when they have a huge sale. And I'm actually personally going to upgrade to my, I'm going to upgrade my annual plan. So I'm paying monthly right now, but I'm going to go to annual on Black Friday because it's a huge discount. And so you can push that out and get a much better deal. This way you have access to that. Now, is that something that's worth it for you? I don't know, because if you don't have that, what can you do? Well, it depends upon it. it you're going to be going off of the chart visuals and then you won't be able to create custom um, reports and go back further and further and further. They just limit you kind of annoying. It is what it is. Um, the other perk or positive. So on top of, I guess I would wait till Black Friday timeframe or when there's a holiday sale. Usually it's Black Friday. They have a big one. Wait till Black Friday. So go monthly until then. So pay like you're paying monthly and then go yearly on Black Friday. That's a huge discount. And then there's also a link below the video that is an affiliate link transparency, but it will save you $15. So if you want to upgrade a premium, it'll save you $15 off that plan. If you want the deep back testing, I think it's important because you need to look deeper or look further out and have a, a good sense and be able to kind of customize the time frames you're back testing um, and, and go a little bit beyond what the surface level stuff is giving you. Uh, and it also just makes it easier. So do you need it? No, but could it be useful? And, and if you're looking at this and, and you're actually going to build off these strategies and, and utilize them and potentially trade off of them then yes. So leave any questions, comments below. If you want me to talk about exporting the trade data to Excel and optimizing that, if you want more information on how we can now take these trades, set up alerts, and then automate them, which is also super sick, let me know because that is possible. That's becoming more popular and I'm utilizing it myself. So I think that's super cool. I'm going to make a video on that, but if you want or have any specific questions about those things, leave them below so I can add that into those videos. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.